Gary Neville joins us from the gantry now. Mm. Gary, on the final whistle, you described the performance as disgusting. Now you've had a, a few moments for the, the dust to settle. What are your thoughts? Yeah, my choice of words sometimes is a little unfortunate. Um, but if, if all the words I use during commentary are atrocious, awful, disgusting, it was all those things in the first half. Second half, I comment less on because of the fact they're down to 10 men and they're having a little bit of a go. Um, but just, you know, he's talked about two things there. He's talked about the pressing element of the game. He's talked about, obviously, the playing out from the back. The pressing element, I mean, they, they sort of dropped to what would be sort of now deemed as a mid-block position when it was Xerxes and sort of Fernandez, And I couldn't work out what the trigger was for the press for the first sort of five, ten minutes of the match. Surely one of the centre-backs is on the ball, whether it's Van de Ven or Romero, they press off one of them getting the ball because they think they're the weakest. Or do they wait for it to go to a right-back or a left-back and then they press off a side? It was as if they were just allowing Tottenham to basically play at their own will without any trigger for a press at all. So I wasn't quite sure what the plan was in terms of the press. You then come on to playing out from the back and Tottenham do press pretty well. They've got good energy up front and Manchester United have proven time and time again, only here against Liverpool a few weeks ago, that they get caught all the time against a half-decent team when they try and play out sort of from the back. And then we move on to the players. So you say, are the players not buying into what Eric Ten Hag is telling them to do or do they not believe in it? Um, one thing I can say is that their application towards doing it was abysmal. And the most worrying thing was, and maybe I didn't pay enough attention to it on Wednesday night, was Ericsson's comments around the fact that he felt that FC20 wanted it more, that they were more hungry. That is a player that is in the middle of that dressing room, who I would suggest is very well respected by the rest of his colleagues and very well respected by the manager. He's an experienced player. He's played hundreds and hundreds of games at the highest level and he's questioning the motivation and the attitude of his players. I would ignore everything else, to be fair, post this match and what's being said. And let's go back three days to that. Because really what's come to the fore today is that what he's seeing day in, day out in training as an experienced player emanates on a weekend. And we've seen it here today. They really didn't put the effort in in that first half. Now, in the past, when Manchester United have been in this position where you know, a manager has been under pressure, the players sometimes have felt the pressure, the strain, and they look drained and they look lacking in the belief. And that sometimes can mean that they look like they're not working hard. I don't believe any player goes out onto a pitch and wants to not play well and wants to get criticism. So I'm torn here today as to why Ericsson has said that on Wednesday about his teammates, that they're not hungry enough. Because what we've seen out there in that first half today supports it. Gary, we've had these post-mortems after Manchester United performances and, and results before. And Pat asked Eric Ten Hag if the failings were familiar, if they were ones that, that we'd seen before. Ten Hag said he didn't really understand what Pat was referring to. What was your thoughts on that? No, one thing we know from the last 10 to 12 years is that from a day like today, it becomes really challenging and that you've got to reverse that very quickly. Great managers have been employed by this club over the last 10, 12 years and they found it very difficult. And going into that third season, the ones who've got there have started to be put under a little bit of pressure. Eric Ten Hag, obviously, at the end of last season was under great pressure and the new owners had a look around the market to see whether they could find another manager and another coach. They decided that they couldn't do and they supported Eric Ten Hag and they backed him with a significant investment. However, they would have expected, I think, I, I felt like today was an important moment in the season for United and naively thought that Spurs might be good opponents because of their high line and because of the fact they give you a chance. I just thought they've got all their players fit apart from Luke Shaw. It's Tottenham at home where Manchester United historically have had a good record over the last 20, 30 years. And yet they were absolutely awful and it was as bad as it gets. And that a day like today, we've seen a few of them, haven't we, over the last 10 years? You've just mentioned it, Kelly, where you've been doing these interviews with me. And it hasn't gone that well from these types of day forwards. He's got to get a hold of it and a grip of it very quickly. And I would suggest the players, to be honest with you, have got that in their control. I'd be suggesting the players probably go and have a meeting themselves tomorrow morning without the manager because they've got to decide first what they want to do. And Eric Ten Hag has got a lot of friends in that dressing room that have worked with him previously at other clubs. They need to get a grip of that dressing room very quickly because it doesn't look that great out there in that first half today. And if the, the club have looked around in the, in the summer and looked for a replacement for Eric Ten Hag, then decided that he was the best option for them to start the season with, 
Do you think they'll still be thinking that at, at this stage after what you've said is a, a, a has been a really important game for Manchester United that's gone completely the wrong way for them? I think what they definitely would have been looking at, giving him a new contract and supporting him in the transfer market, is to give them probably you know one or two years of air cover to allow them. There's a lot of change going on behind the scenes in the club just generally across the whole club, on and off the pitch. And they're obviously trying to implement an organisation and processes. And I think they would have wanted along the way some victories and some wins and some good performances just so that they can get to busy, you know, get busy doing their work. The problem is the sort of, if you like, attention is going to come towards them very quickly if the performances continue as they are, to, you know, as it has been today and the results, because they're going to be put under real pressure and they won't want that at this stage. And, you know, they're only two or three months in. You know, they've tried to obviously sort of give Eric Ten Hag some time and I did expect them to get better. I did expect them to progress in the first few months after the transfer window that they had. But today has shocked me, I have to say, about how low they've gone. It was a really bad one. I know that David Moyes had some bad ones in the early days and so has Oli along the way and Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho and Ralph Ranić. But that felt like one of those days today that where they sank really low.